In this video, I'm going to discuss the use of the Sona Test Wave digital ultrasonic flaw detectors. When the unit's powered up, you'll see a screen that looks like this. On here, you can access a few different menus. At the top right are the settings. And if we go into settings, you can use general to adjust the display brightness, which however will not show on a video. You can change modes if you want to use it in high contrast mode, particularly for outdoor use. Glove mode is a high sense, high screen sensitivity. And then you can see where the time and uh, time zone can be selected for your specific area. We'll go ahead and change this now to Eastern time for the United States where we are. You can also select languages in here. You can connect, can connect this to networks and that's how I'm streaming and recording the video today. And then there's some information about the unit, including um, the serial number, the calibration date, software version, and whatnot. And then finally, kind of their legal stuff that uh, isn't really that important. If we go back to the main page, the two circling arrows are used to perform updates. Whether you do it over the internet or USB, we're not gonna bother with that today. And then here you can see there are three programs loaded right now. Default Imperial and Default SI are, are Imperial units and metric units respectively that have every single option available to be able to change when using the unit. For ABS 3655 class, I've created a separate program on here that is a pared down version and matches the items that'll be needed for lab. If we go into that program by tapping it, it brings up this screen. And at the top, it starts, it shows a description. So this is to be used by the AVS 3655 class when learning to program, learning to perform ultrasonic tests. You can use one or more of the straight beam transducers that are available. The first one being the, the model V112-10 slash 0.25. That's a quarter inch 10 megahertz contact transducer with a micro dot connector. We also have available the FCR 3725, which is a 3 8 inch by 2.25 megahertz contract contact transducer with a micro dot connector. And then finally, the last straight beam, the last straight beam transducer that's available is the RDT 2510. And this is a 1 quarter inch 10 megahertz delay line transducer. So in this case, the, uh, the transceiver is offset from the workpiece in order to do thin or look look at thin materials or materials where there may be flaws near the surface. There's a list of configurations here. The default configuration are the, the default settings for all the different parameters that were loaded and a list, a summary list is to the right. Uh, so you can see this one's design primarily for aluminum material, although you can change anything to make it, to use it on steel or any other material. Pre-programmed thickness starts at one inch with no welds. The generic probe is a mono circular probe, the transmit receive probe. Default frequency five megahertz. Angle is zero for straight beam uh, transmit receive, uh, pulse echo mode. Uh, probe width or diameter is defaulted to 0 0.200 inches with a gain set at 25 decibels and a reference gain set at, at zero decibels used in summary. Before we go into the configuration, there's an auto save and that is after going into the default, if any changes are made and you exit a configuration, uh, the last set of changes that were made were auto saved. And if I touch that, You'll see there aren't any changes because I've loaded the default and then loaded out of this. After we've gone in and used the configuration, you can also save certain setups or configurations, and those will those will show below auto save here. You can see you cannot delete the default 
or autosave, delete is grayed out in the lower right. If there were additional configurations that had been saved, you can tap on that configuration. And then if you press and hold delete, you can see on the delete button, there is a, a finger with a circle kind of around it. That means you have to press and hold for that function to operate. And it would delete it. Loaded in here are the procedures, including the lab that goes along with ultrasonic testing. So if I if I highlight that, um, you can see I can tap view in the lower right. And it will actually load the PDF of the lab. This is the same lab that is printed or available on eLearning. I can hit the back button in the lower left to go back. There's also a sound velocity chart available on here. Again, by pressing view, it comes up. And so on here, we can see aluminum, for instance, is 0 0.250 inches per nanosecond. Um, the, uh, there's a few other things on here. Um, iron, 0 0.230, for instance. Uh, steel is going to be down here near the bottom. Mild stainless steel, also 0 0.230. Uh, and titanium 0 0.240. So those are some of the common uh, common materials used in aviation. Hitting the bottom left back button brings you back to this page. These are ones where deleting can take place. So if, if I were to want to delete one of these, kind of like the configuration, I would press and hold. If I just tap the delete button, you can see nothing happens. To actually delete it, I have to press and hold that. There's a reports page if you've created, if you'd like to create a report in here, uh, or if you already have created a report in here, you can go here and view the reports. If, there, if reports have been created, they would be available here to view. Otherwise, you can create and delete reports as well. In order to launch my configuration, I tap on configurations, and then I'm going to go with the default, and then I press the launch button. And that will bring up a a ultrasonic testing screen a few features here on the top left we have we can adjust gain by tapping on it and it brings up a menu and this is to show how some of these different menus work there's three different ways i can set the the gain level here i can drag the slider up and down i can tap some preset levels which there is by tapping the button at the top with the three boxes, I can change what's shown here. So I can do preset levels, or I can increase and decrease it by given increments. Finally, if I know a certain level I want to be at, I can tap the button that looks like a keypad, which will bring up a keypad. And now I can type in specific gain that I want. And those control menus are fairly similar, no matter which uh, control it is you're adjusting. With the screen, this is this does allow two finger touch, where I can tap the screen and I can zoom in. You can see the scales change as I zoom, zoom in, or zoom out. If I want to reset my zoom back to where it was, I can press the reset zoom button in the top left corner. Just below gain, there's a snowflake there. That means freeze. That will freeze the screen. Uh, so currently, if I have a probe hooked up, we'll go ahead and hook a probe up. When my probe is hooked up, any kind of movement or contact with a surface or whatnot is going to change uh, what I see. And so right now, and couple my probe to a piece of material. And if I place the probe on the material, you can see we start to get some echoes. And they're moving as I move. If at any time, if I press the snowflake, I'm now moving the probe around and nothing is changing. That's a, that just simply freezes the screen. To unfreeze it, I press the snowflake again. Next to that snowflake is a picture, and I can take a, a picture either while it's in live mode or while frozen. So if I hit the picture button, 
we'll get a picture here and I can name it. The name. If I want to comment on it, I can add that as well. When I'm done with the keyboard, I press the little keyboard icon. I can decide how good my picture is and can give it a rating. One to three stars. Also, color coding. In some industries, maybe if, if, if a part they inspect is okay, they give it a green rating. Uh, however, if you find a part that's that's a known flaw, you give it the red rating. Um, or you can do something in between, you know, maybe if it needs follow-up. And then once I have decided what I'm going to do with it, I can hit save in the lower right. And I've saved the picture. Now we're back to the live view again. You can see the things moving on the screen as I wobble the probe around. We'll get into signal and setting things up in a later video when I do calibration, uh, as well as using the gate measurements, which are the, the four boxes across the top. Uh, working our way to the right, we have layout. It's currently an A scan. This allows you to perform a, a simulated B scan by using what's called scan plan. And so this is, but what we do have to do is put some details in about how big our part is. So right now this is showing a one inch thick part and the, the part that we're actually on is only one half of an inch thick. Uh, so we would have to adjust this for the part. Uh, and then we also, because we don't use an encoder, we have to manually position our probe in this in this A scan, or sorry, B scan, excuse me. Uh, and then you can also show the two, the A, A scan plus the plan scan or the simulated B scan side by side. We're going to stick with A scan. The three bars on the top right have a few more controls. Once we've dialed in, or if we have a picture that we, a screen that we like, we can move to full screen view, or while we're performing testing, we can go to a full screen view to get a little bit bigger, more detailed picture. Uh, I can save my settings. So this is where I was talking about other settings. So I can do um, saved settings. So we'll call this settings, demo settings. We'll call it demo. I can make a report from here, just like you can see the other way. I'm gonna, we'll save that for a later time. And then finally, if I wanna leave this screen, if I wanna leave this, this testing configuration, I can press exit. And now you can see exit has brought us back to the configuration select screen. Uh, and now there is the demo, uh, the demo configuration that I saved. And the difference, so default configuration, the one I'll point out is gain on the right side over in this area, was originally 25 decibels. And in our demo, I had changed it to 20 decibels. So now it shows those. If I want to go back into there, I can press launch. If I'm not going to use it, I can press and hold delete. And you'll see that one has now gone away. When I'm done in this area, I can hit the back button in the lower left. It takes me back to the main screen. And if I'm done with the tester, when we turn it on, there's a power, a physical power button on the, on the tester. For shutting down, uh, Sona test has, uh, in the manual for this unit, it tells you to use the red button in the lower right corner. So for shutdown, I'll press the button in the lower right. If that was a mistake, I can hit cancel. Or if I am actually ready to shut down, I can press the shutdown button and we'll lose our screen view. As, we, as the unit shuts off. 